Derek, let me just say thank you very much indeed for recording an interview for our Peter Cushing documentary. It's a great pleasure. It's uh, certainly very kind of you. And thank you for your wonderful hospitality, inviting us to your home. Well, you've only had one cup of coffee. You must have another one. We will crack open a few other bottles, right. won't we? I've seen a few in the, in the cupboard. Don't worry, will I? Well, have you home. seen them, have you? <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, what a great opportunity just to sit and chat and, and to kind of join in our production diary for this week yeah. to kind of see what's happening and meet some of the people who are on right. the film. Yeah, so lovely. you have some really fond memories of, of working with Peter, don't you? And the letter we've talked yeah, about. Yeah, and I also. know. Uh, it, as I say, it was only six weeks. But uh, I'll always remember those, those weeks and looking forward to going to work because I was going to see Peter Cushing and, mm. and, and act with him and, and, and watch him, you know, uh, muck about with Thorley Walters, <laughs> the two of them <laughs> together. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful six weeks of my life. And mm. Although it's, what, 50 odd years ago, you, I've never forgotten it. But I think in my career, what I remember most are the wonderful actors and people that I've worked with. Okay, there are parts you've played and and jobs you've had that you wish you hadn't, but parts you play that you've been very proud of. But mm. basically, looking back, it's the it's the privilege and, and the honour of working with, you know, just great actors and wonderful people like Alistair Sim and Alec Guinness and Kenneth Moore, Lawrence Harvey, Derek Bogard, and of course the great Peter. And uh, you, you don't forget the times you spent with these wonderful people. And uh, even as a transvestite with uh, Robert well, Morley. No, 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 well, well, that's Robert, a different story. No, Robert wrote this play. I laugh every time I think about it. He wrote this play called <laughs> The Picture of Innocence, it was called. It was about three transvestites. He was a high court judge. I was his secretary. Uh, Kenneth Griffith was his accountant. And we had this flat in Mayfair where we used to meet and dress up. And then we realised that our wives didn't know. And we were being blackmailed. So... <laughs> In the first act, I was Dorothy L'Amour. In the second <laughs> act, I was Betty Grable. Yeah, I can you remember, see that. You remember her? I can see that, yeah. And uh, when I introduced myself as Betty Grable to my wife, uh, who play, was played by Susie Blake, I'll never, ever, ever forget it. But the icing on the cake was when Robert came in after, at the end of the first act in a ball gown and a tiara. And it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my whole career. And every night I laughed. And Robert used to say, Derek, don't you take anything seriously? You know, he goes, I just love the man. He was uh, full of joie de vivre and, mm. uh, and fun and generosity. And, uh, the great Robert Morley, yeah, that was, that was another one. I mean, talking of eccentric, I mean, he was a little bit eccentric, but Alistair Sim was a bit... Uh... Well, Alistair, I did a play. I was on the stage with him in a play called uh, uh, um, A Private Matter, it was called. And I had to do a full frontal nude strip. And when I did the tour, it wasn't with Alistair Sim. Ah. So... It was with a wonderful actor called Robin Bailey. And that scene at the end of the first act, when I reenact what my father, who was a famous general, what he had done on parade, because he went out to review the troops stark naked, because he was fed up with the bureaucracy. So I reenacted what my father did. And then Robin Bailey, it was quick. <laughs> my, my brother knocks me out and I, I'm, I'm laid down on my mother's lap and the curtain comes down. Nobody really sees anything. Now, Alistair Sim, as we know, is a comedy genius. So that scene, when I took my clothes off and stood there stark naked, 
he made that last almost five minutes. <laughs> he was playing around with the rug. He was doing things with the hands. He was, I mean, it just went on and on and on. And the audience loved him. Except I was exposing myself. And my mother, my lovely mum, sent me a telegram on the first night. And she said, please keep it as private as possible. <laughs> <laughs> but Alistair, on the, on the stage with Alistair, every night for six months was... Quite a was, treat. Well, it was a master class, really. Yeah, I bet. And of course, Paul Eddington used to say to me, uh, working with Paul and Nigel uh, was one of the joys of my life too. Uh, they were both great actors and, and uh, Paul used to say to me, it's a master class for you, this, isn't it? I said, what, what? I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you get to stand between Nigel and I every week. It's a master class. <laughs> Even if he does say so himself. Yes, no, it's true. He used to say, he used to say that. I've told that story. It's true. It's true. What a great, I mean, when you think of your television career, for example. <clears throat> yes Minister, Yes Prime Minister is iconic in, yeah. in comedy TV. We, we didn't know at the time. Paul did. Paul used to say, that they'll be showing this forever. And I said, really? Is it that good? He said, well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love them both. But it, it was one of those unique things, as I said to you earlier, that great writing. Yeah. But as a, an ensemble cut, the three of you together, just yeah. if any one of you had changed or, or not yeah. been it, it would never have been the same. It mm. needed all three. Well, I think we were lucky that we yeah. all, we did know each other, not well, but when we started. And it's just one of those wonderful things that you can go into a cup. There was such a, a love between us and we became very close friends. Yeah. As well as close colleagues. We socialized together and, and I, I miss them so much and and uh, I remember Paul ringing me up I'd, I'd been doing Heartbeat for about two, two years and uh, the phone rang and Paul said hello Derek it's Paul I said hello he said I've just watched Heartbeat I said really what are you doing on that channel <laughs> and he said no, no, he said, you're very good in it. I said, well, that's wonderful, coming from you. He said, don't stay too long. Wow. I said, really? He said, yes. So I stayed for another 12 years. Yeah, 18 years in 18 years. years. Yeah. But, uh, no, they, they, they were badgering me to, you know, get back on the stage. And mm. in a way, they, they were right, I wish. But then... I just stayed because I was over 60 and, and I loved the people, I loved the, uh, the location, the Yorkshire and loved the crew, I loved the cast and, and you're in regular work. Mm. So you don't knock it, you stay with it. And Absolutely, yeah. But Paul wanted me to leave after two years. Did he have a project in mind or no. was just, just fatherly advice? No, he was just... Or brotherly uh, advice, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was... Uh, they were both, Nigel and Paul were, you know, again, I've been so lucky to be in that show with them. And the fact that we uh, became great friends is uh, was a bonus, really. And Margaret Thatcher is a fan too. Is that well, you know, I think she was a fan of Yes Minister. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, she goes, I, th I think she believed it was her government. But when, it <laughs> well, when he became prime minister, hacker, mm. I think she went off the whole idea. <laughs> I don't know. The I truth will out, you see. But they did a sketch with her. I didn't. I was on tour in a play. And they went to record a sketch that she'd written. And uh, I thought they had a a lot of nerve to do that, mm. but they did. I don't think they enjoyed themselves very much. But anyway, that's uh, showbiz. And talking of showbiz, I mean, Mr. Derek. 
Well, only very, impression. No, only, only very old people remember. People who are above a certain age. Yes. Present company. Well, you said to Just me, creeping in. You were five when I started. <laughs> yeah. I didn't well, say five well, what, though. I didn't quite say No, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, as I said, it was a five years of again joy. You weren't, You only did. The, you did the first series. You said then. When well, I, I did the first series, and I thought, no, I, I'm a classically trained actor. What the hell am I doing with my hand around a bit of fur and looking in buttons and pretending this is real? I thought, no, I can't do this. Mm. So I went off to play Hamlet, which. Uh, a London critic said it was the funniest Hamlet he'd seen in 25 years. And I thought, God, what am I doing wrong? Anyway. Praise is praise. They, they praise is praise. It. It's best to be talked about. It. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, they asked me to do another series and I hummed and hard and thought, oh, God. And I had two young boys and, and I went back and it was that, it was that second series that something quite strange and magical happened. Mm. I, 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 I put my arm around a, a bit of fur and it became a tail. And I, I looked into these buttons and they became eyes. And Basil Brouch became my best pal. And when I left five years later, I had withdrawal symptoms. I really missed him. We did eight series together and two Royal Command performances. Amazing. And if you believe that, you believe that's no, it's true. That is absolutely true. I, I, I so love that show mm. and the kids. And, uh, and it's the closest I've ever been to being a sex symbol. Okay. It's true. Yeah. <clears throat> you had longer hair then. I had long hair and I had cowboy boots and... Various tops, I thought, were a bit over the top. But yeah, and uh, yeah, it was special. They've all gone now, sadly. Uh, mm. The writer and Ivan, who looked after Basil. Even Basil now is gone. He's in a suitcase somewhere. <laughs> you mustn't laugh, but not with that chesty cough. I know, I've had this cough. But I'm now on antibiotics, so that is my excuse. So any any day, hopefully by the end of the week, I'll be back, back feel. to my juvenile self. And then going to revisit some of the old heartbeat roots. A bit of a trip you've got planned. Yeah, well, I'm day? I'm coming up to my eighty first birthday. Not many people believe that. Under these lights, though, it's it's probably forty first. Very very happy. That's what I'm thinking. Well, I'm going to believe you until I see it, then I might change. We but, can do uh, wonders on the computer now. Good. Yeah. Yes, thank you. No makeup. Um, so I'm going back to Gothland, where we yeah. shot, and where I stayed for eighteen years. The hotel is now very upmarket, but I've told them that I'm on my way and uh, just going up for two days to have a quiet 81st. Because last year my 80th was a, you know, took me about a week to recover from that. But, I can imagine. But no, it'll be lovely to go back. Mm. I have been back since two or three times and uh, yeah, it's a special place. Are you going to take the play out again with Donald? It well, going, like... going back on stage was, was quite a challenge and, and I realised that when I was on, I really enjoyed it. Mm. It was a very funny play. I loved working with Donald again uh, after all those years. And because uh, we met when I was 18 and he was 22. And uh, now he's 80. I think he's 85 now. God. I'm 81. So, yeah, and it worked for us. It wasn't easy to get on, but once... Once they shoved you on. Once they shoved us on and we were yeah. sitting there and we heard the audience getting quieter and quieter and then the curtains opened and we thought, God, what have we done? Geez, why are we doing this? <laughs> And then Dr. Theatre, as you said in the interview, kicks in. Kicks in. And they laughed. And you're off. And they clapped. 
and it is a very funny piece and I think Donald and I you know would would love to maybe next year do it again so it's like a one act play two old yeah, guys so you know it lasts 45 minutes so we need to find a companion piece uh, to go with it but mm. uh, yeah two old guys sitting in a pub getting slowly slowly sozzled talking about life love Death, marriage, sex, memory loss, etc., etc. And then all those again, because you'd forgotten what you talked about. Yes, this. and then one of us forgot, and there was a prompt from the corner, and people thought that was part of the play. <laughs> <laughs> so we might keep that in. Wow! No, it was. A, it gets a laugh. It was a love. It was lovely to go to France and. Mm. And to see Donald and you know his his wife Emma and stay with him and yeah so as I say it was the first time on stage for sixteen was it seventeen years so damn it man that's what you were trained to do Rada yeah theater, yeah all those theater. years ago that's all we yeah. trained for was for the theatre we never thought about film or telly <laughs> we never wanted to be famous no, no. didn't know what that was. And I'm not, so it doesn't matter. There you go. Glad to be working. <laughs> oh dear, I will get well one day. You will, and the antibiotics will kick in. And look, Derek, thank you ever so much for doing the interview for the documentary. Thank yeah. you for doing this little production well, diary for us for the, for the film. Pleasure. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the, the two header one act play yeah. very, very soon. Yeah. Well, next year. Next year. If I'm still here. Yeah, Tish. Of course you will. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks very much. It's been a joy. Mm -hmm.